I'm Fran Clifton. I'm the head gardener at Sir Harold Hillier Gardens in Hampshire. The Bible Society garden at Chelsea is absolutely amazing. And of course, with that, there is the, the huge expectation that we can't replicate that. But I think there are small elements and small little parts of it which you can implement in your community, at church grounds or maybe school grounds. The first thing to consider when you are building a new garden or you're maybe transforming an old garden um, is looking at the soil, looking at the climate and looking at the position of what you have in the garden. So getting the basics right at the beginning will help you to transform it and make a success of it. It's really important to have trees in your garden. They give you height, structure, they give you depth to any garden. So sunlight is broken up by shadow and you get this really three-dimensional effect within the landscape. You don't need a 200-year-old oak tree in the middle of your garden to achieve this feeling. You can buy one for 50, 60 pounds and put it in a pot. You might want to consider within your planting is a spindle bush, which stays compact, has good autumn colour. Or the other one, of course, is the Cornell cherry, Cornus mass, which is early flowering and can be grown in any situation. You might want to consider planting some shade-loving shrubs or even some ground cover planting, which is equally as nice. In this area here, we've got a lovely geranium. It flowers all year, it's semi-evergreen, so it ticks an awful lot of boxes. Seating in any garden is quite crucial to just stop and look and listen and to really enjoy what's around us. There are lots of ways you can have incorporate seating in your garden. So you can have this big bench here, for instance, where you can have four, maybe five people sitting on and sharing that moment together. Or you can have seating just maybe on your own if you want to have a quiet moment of contemplation. The, the placing of a bench can really impact how they're used. So you can have, for instance, like we have here, we have three benches gathered together. So you could also place a bench by a view, so you're using a shot and just literally just gaze into the landscape. It really can make a difference of how the bench is, is used. It doesn't have to be a traditional bench with four legs. It could be anything. It could be a wall. It could be some rocks put together. It could be a a tree stump or a tree log put in place. Of course, Sarah Eberly uses water really well in her design at Chelsea, with a cascading waterfall over the rocks, which is beautiful. But you don't need that to create that magical water moment in your garden. For 50 or 60 pounds, you can buy this beautiful wooden barrel. On the other hand, you can have, for next to nothing, really, you can have an old water butt cut in half and filled with water. You could leave it in the corner and put planting around it, but of course you could also equally just dig a hole, sink it in the ground, and nobody would know that there hasn't been a pond before. Planting up a pond is really simple. This is how we do it here at the gardens. I'll take half a brick, my water lily, which I broke off earlier, and I will now secure this water lily very gently to the brick. This will allow it to stay secure underwater, otherwise it would just float up. And here's my water lily parcel. For a few pounds, you can create a really lovely small water feature in your community garden. Grass is a wonderful thing, and of course not everybody has got it, but if you're lucky enough to have some patch of grass in your garden, you might want to do more with it. This meadow here we haven't cut for about a year now and you can see what's coming up. All sorts of different grasses, there are some flowers coming up, the clovers, the buttercups, they're all coming up and they're really important for pollinators, for bees, butterflies and moths. But we can enhance it by putting some spring flowers in. So the whole meadow idea starts actually off in February. And I've got some plug plants here of Primula vulgaris which I'm just going to pop in the ground and they will happily sit amongst the grasses and will flower next year, February, for me. As the grass grows in springtime, you can start mowing your paths in. And of course, a straight path would just get you from A to B. But if you just add a little bend in there, it just slows you down. You can start reflecting. Above all, it really creates interest for the children and it's just fun to be out there. 
work with what you've got. Don't, don't alter everything, you know, work with a tree which you've got in your garden or work with a little bit of lawn you have. It doesn't have to cost the earth. You can achieve an awful lot with just actually making use of the facilities you already have. So by, by making those little changes and you have created a beautiful haven for wildlife and for the humans to sit in, of course, and above all, really enjoy the time out there in the garden.